thing. Joyfully, with a loud voice, 
for all the deeds of power that they have seen, saying, Blessed is the king who is coming in the name of our Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heavens. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to them, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if they were silent, the rocks would cry out. Why don't you pray with me as we wrestle for a small moment with this title, The Point of No Return. Amen. God, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for how your presence is already here. Right now, God, I ask that you would give me preaching power, that you would hide me behind your presence, that you would speak a word through me so that your people will have nourishment to live. God, we thank you for your divine encounter. We don't take it for granted. We know we're not worthy, but we thank you for blessing us, gracing us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Somebody go ahead and shout amen. Amen. You may be seated. At the point of no return, Peter, at the point, pops of no return. Uh, today, Palm Sunday, churches around the world are reflecting on Jesus' great march. Jesus' march towards the Calvary's cross. Today, we, the people of the Community Church of Washington, D.C., and our community, we come together today to reflect on this moment where Jesus does something rather different. Mm. Jesus does something rather radical, rather unique for his time. Yes. He triumphantly entered the capital city, the holy city called Jerusalem. Yes. He comes into this city making a whole lot of noise, a whole lot of fuss at the beginning of a sacred holy holiday called Passover. Yes. Now y'all know when we have sacred, holy holidays, we're supposed to keep quiet. We're supposed to take a posture of reverence. Don't come into the city making a whole lot of noise as if it was pride. Don't come into the city making a whole lot of noise as if it was freaknik. Don't come into the city ready, but you gotta be quiet. It's high holy season. Don't come into the city making a lot of noise. Jesus decided to come into the city and make a statement. Jesus decided to come into the city in a way that he would ensure that he got everybody's attention. Well, I see you, Monica. You know what I'm talking about. Y'all know folks that do this quite often. Folks who walk into a room loud as ever to get everybody's attention. Folks who dress to the night, hair whip, face beat, got all the freshest gift. They walk in late to every meeting, every service. They'll read you down, loud as ever, so that everybody will look and say, what's going on over there? Yeah. In a similar matter, Jesus decided that this would be the time for him to make a scene. This scene, however, would not be just to get an attention, just to get attention. It was a proclamation that, that, that it was a proclamation to everybody around that he was on a mission, that he had a purpose, and he wanted the world to know. Jesus decided that it was time to go to the point of no return. Yeah. Uh, the story says that Jesus rode into the city on an ass, rode into the place that would manifest his ultimate purpose, his ultimate destiny on earth, on an ass. Yeah. Uh, if we look at this for a brief moment from a contemporary land, uh, a contemporary urban perspective from my shy town ghetto perspective. Uh, I think this passage right here might just tell us something. See, some folks need to take a note right here from this passage and stop letting asses ride you and you need to ride the ass for your destiny.
riding into the capital city on a high holy day on a donkey made a profound statement. It symbolized royalty. See, this was the thing that the king did. During a time of peace, no more the king would ride into the city on a donkey, which gave a statement to everybody who watched. I am the king and I'm declaring that we are in a season of peace. Jesus riding into the city on a donkey was an intentional attention getter to let everybody know that here comes the Prince of Peace. Here comes the King of Glory. Here comes the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I am now here. Yes. It was an attention getter right. to profess a proclamation to everybody around. Pay attention. Something just changed. The paradigm has just shifted and the Prince of Peace has now entered the city. Yes, That's it. And then Jesus decided that it was time to go to the next level, yes. the point of no return. Uh, see, before this, Jesus healed many. Jesus fed a great multitude. The Bible says 5,000 and 2,000. Uh, he brought folks from the dead, Lazarus. He, from just calling out that, he turned water into wine. He walked on water. Jesus did a plethora of things. All of those things were great. Yes. But after each one of those things, Jesus could have easily turned back and turned around. Mm. Well, what am I saying? Let me help you here. See, those things were easy for Jesus. Jesus could have said, oh yeah, I'm just another healer. Don't confuse me. I'm not, I'm just another prophet. Not just the prophet, no, another prophet. I'm just another this, that, or the other. But when he did this, this act gave a message that I'm not just any other prophet. I'm not just any other healer. I life, allowed his life to be calm, allowed his life to be something that wasn't public, but in this moment it was the ultimate proclamation that I am the son of God. God wrapped in flesh. I think we can learn something from this. He could have lived beneath his call mm. and purpose, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And this yeah. might just be a lesson for many of us today who try to hide in the background. Yeah. The lesson for us today who try to hide in the mega church so we don't have to use our gifts. The lesson for us today who don't want to be called, don't Don't downplay who you really are. Yeah. Scared that they're going to judge you for being who God made you to be. Stop downplaying your anointing. Scared to be called a holy roller or a Bible lover. Stop downplaying your religion. So often we say, I'm going to lose my religion. What kind of religion do you have that you can lose it? That is it. Come on, stop downplaying your joy. Thinking that your joy is going to make someone else feel uncomfortable. Guess what? The story you have, the world is dead. And the world. Tuition dollars to quit now. I've invested too many years in the vision to give up right here. 
no return. When I was a child, I thought my God. Every moment was a moment for me to throw a tantrum, a tantrum, a tantrum. Every moment was a moment for me to say, I don't want you to play with my blocks. But right now, baby, I'm grown. And I learned through the stuff I had to make through that I got to keep moving forward. Press me towards the prize of the call, of the Hamas, of the high call. In Christ Jesus. Point of no return. You already there. Don't let the enemy think you can turn around. Go like that. Keep going forward. Turn to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor you're at the point of no return. Keep moving forward. God's standing all over the place. Good God, have you got me?